Empower Youth Week Masterclass. Be inspired, be connected, be transformed. Greetings, Dumelangs and Bonani. Uh, welcome to Empower, uh, Empower Youth Week with me, Mpo Letsolo Nyani. Um, today, we are about to embark on a masterclass that is all about the sports careers in a world of technology. Um, and the reason we're doing that is because there is so much to do in the world of sports. You don't just have to be a sports uh, personality on the field of play in order to be able to be in this huge, vast area that is called sport. So as I mentioned, my name is Mpolet Solonyani. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. So I am a broadcaster. And the reason I'm not specifying that I'm a sports broadcaster is because I do radio, television, I do lifestyle, I do sports as well. But on the sporting side of things, I joined Supersport back in 2009. Um, I do touchline presenting, which is basically the people who get to talk to the coaches and the player of the match. Um, uh, and the players on the field of play. Um, but also, um, I get to be in studio and I get to anchor some amazing games. Uh, over the years, I have anchored the FIFA World Cup final in 2018. I have anchored a uh, Women's World Cup final. Um, I have anchored um, AFCON, you know, games. I've anchored Chan. So if it's been on television from a football perspective, I've probably done it <laughs> at least once, which is absolutely amazing. So in 2009, I joined Supersport, um, left them in 2013 to join SABC Sport, left SABC Sport in 2018 to go back to Supersport. And that's where I currently am. So it's been a fun journey. Um, it's taken me all around the world. Uh, so that's been the nice thing about it, getting to travel as well, getting to see the world, getting to meet some of my favorite personalities. That is a plus. So you don't have to be on the field to meet your favorite personalities. You sometimes get the opportunity to do what I do, which is what I'm going to tell you about today, because there's many, many careers that you can get up to. And the reason we're talking about technology and sport is because COVID-19 has fast-tracked technology in sport, right? These day, this day and age, we're talking about the likes of your goal line technology. We're talking about VAR, which every time there's been a goal, everybody wants to know. I'm sure if you're watching football, you've seen specifically Mamelodi Sundowns players, they wear these vests, right? That look like they're wearing sports bras. They actually have heart rate monitors in their vests. And those heart rate monitors help the coaches see how a player is performing when they are on the field. How, many, how much running did they do? How has their heart rate performed? Um, how are they coping with the load that is on the field so that they can better equip them and make them even better athletes so that, you know, Mamilodi Sundowns keeps ticking like they're ticking. So they use technology a lot. But the other thing that I like um, that we keep seeing is referees and, you know, the, the linesmen. Back in the day, it was a matter of the referee having to go to the linesman to ask them what they saw when they're lifting the flag. But these days, they've got headsets, so they communicate in real time automatically. That is the use of technology. We also have video analysts who are very, very important in sport. You know, not just in football, but in rugby, in athletics, in netball. So once a team has gone through a game, they then go back and the video analyst gets to show them what, what tactics worked right, what tactics did not work, how do they improve, but it also helps them plan for the opposition. So you want to know how your opposition plays and how you're going to get the better of them. So that's where video analysis works, but we'll get into all of that a little bit later. But that's just basically to tell you that technology is everywhere now. You know, you can't run away from it. So it's something that we need to embrace. But as I mentioned, COVID-19 has sort of fast-tracked everything. So let's get started with the first career. One of my favorites that you can get into when it comes to sport, right? Marketing. We all saw at the beginning or the news that was making headlines when Messi um, left Barcelona. What a shocker. Nobody saw that one coming. Um, and then you also had Cristiano Ronaldo leave Juventus and go back to Manchester United. When that happened, this is where 
a marketing manager comes into play because their job is to assess market demand for products and services. They work with the sales and development teams to meet those demands. And basically they are in charge of the branding, the managing of the image of the team or the club. They enhance fan interest and involvement that is in terms of social media. They coordinate events and they improve revenue streams for the club. So going back to the movement of Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo, this was a marketer's dream because you have two of the best footballers right now in our time moving clubs. So as a marketer, PSG, as much as they've been there for years, they were a lesser known club when it comes to league uh, uh, or French football, right? So now you have Messi who's been with Barcelona all these years and you get the opportunity to market PSG, not only to those who only watch the Champions League, but to everybody. And this is an opportunity for you to also make money by way of selling of jerseys. So this is why Messi's jersey sold out because everybody wanted to one day be able to hold this Messi jersey and say, when Messi moved from Barcelona to PSG, I had a jersey. Same happened when Cristiano Ronaldo moved to Manchester United. You don't want to be that fan, that supporter that does not have a jersey. So it is up to the marketing manager to make sure that those jerseys are available. You're pushing the numbers. You're talking to the sponsors. You are making sure that your brand is top of mind. Um, so yeah, that is what a marketing manager does. And it's an absolutely fantastic job. It's exciting. Um, you get to work with the personalities um, front and center because when you're doing photo shoots and stuff, it's your job to be there to make the personality or the athlete look good so that the club looks good. And eventually the club makes money. If the club makes money, you make money. Isn't that fun? <laughs> so in order to become a marketing manager, generally to excel in this field, um, you need a sense of creativity because you have to be creative. Um, you need to have an analytical and interpersonal skills to help you create and execute good marketing strategies. So it's all good and well to have these great ideas, but if you are not able to execute and make them come alive, then you are just wasting your time. So that's the first job, marketing manager. We move on to statisticians. So let's say you want to be into sport, but you're not a very athletic person, but you love numbers. Being a statistician is one of the most perfect spots to get into because these are the people who work with data and mathematic models to help solve practical and real world problems. But in sport, statisticians can work on the sports performance side, finding new ways of analyzing and improving athletics, uh, athletic performance. As I mentioned a bit earlier on, bringing back Mamilo de Sundowns. So when you get all that data from the heart rate monitors and you now, the coach now looks to you as a statistician to make all these numbers make sense, right? So that's where you would come in. You empower the coach with information by making the numbers make sense. But the other nice thing, if you want to not necessarily work with the club, but you want to be on the broadcasting side, you want to work in television, you want to work in radio or even in print, you can then be like the most popular um, statistics providers right now, Opta Jabu. I go to them a lot when I'm going to do my matches. They give me the numbers that are required for the game that I'm going to do. So for instance, here, yeah, here's a great stat that they put out about last week where they said Supersport have lost none of the matches in which Tamsang Rakabuza had scored, um, which is in nine wins, four draws and zero losses. So that's in 13 games that he has been on the score sheet. That question or that statistic allowed me to throw that question to coach Kaitano Tembo and say, did you know that every time Tamsang Nagabuza scores, your team does not lose? That is a statistic he did not know as a coach, but it made me look good as a presenter. So that's what you get to do. You get to make people like myself look good because you give us the numbers and also, there are certain viewers at home who love the numbers. They want to know, Guti, when Pirates and Chiefs are playing, how many times has somebody crossed uh, the floor between either team? How many players have ever played for both clubs? As a statistician, it is your job to give us those numbers and you get to enjoy what, you, what it is that you love, numbers. So if you love numbers and you're not into athletics, don't despair, your work is still there. 
If you love the medical side of things, you also have an opportunity to be in sport. These are people who are very, very important um, on the field of play, physical therapists, the team doctor, the physio, because the team doctor, every match that happens, every game that happens, there has to be a team doctor. Um, you cannot have a game that goes on without either paramedics, team doctor, or physio available because injuries happen all the time. You've seen the people that come onto the field when a player is injured, those people are very, very important. In fact, even outside of the field of play, because when the player gets injured, it is your job as a physio to try and get them back to health, to you know get them to move again and heal in time for the next big game or heal properly. Because sometimes you might find that a player is injured, but they rush the process of healing and things go wrong. So it's your job to make sure that that does not happen. So if you love medicine, you can definitely still become a part of sport. In fact, I work with a physio because I had surgery about two months ago. So I work with a physio every month, no, every week actually. And this person is trying to help me with my healing process. So it's not just on the field of play that you get to work even outside. I'm a broadcaster, but I'm working with a physio. So you see, it helps. Um, on the psychology side, if you are that person that cares about how the mind works and making sure that everyone is zen <laughs> and in a good space, you also have a place in sport. Sports psychology is something that is growing a lot. And the spotlight has been put on sports psychology because of COVID-19. So many athletes have gone through depression because for instance, with regards to football in the country, we went through an eight month period where there was no football. If all you know as an athlete is sport and that gets taken away from you, you feel lost, you're like a fish out of water. And you need somebody to go to, to talk to, who will understand what is happening. And not only just understand what is happening in your life, but also be able to guide you so that you can overcome your sadness. But there's also times where players, athletes, go through a difficult period of an injury. And they're not quite sure how to not only heal physically, but also heal mentally because you know, the mental process is, is a massive one for an athlete because sport is all they know. So that is very, very important part of sport to make sure that athletes are mentally okay so that they can keep going and keep winning. Also, from a psychology perspective, it's important to have a team psychologist because teams go through a difficult period where you're going through five, 10 losses at a time and you need to pick yourself up that's where a sports psychologist comes in to get the players feeling like they can continue. They can keep playing week after week and it's okay. You know, you're going through a slump and you will be okay on the other side. The lady that I've put in the picture, um, Dr. Koke Tsotseve, she's one woman that I absolutely adore. She's made a name for herself in terms of sports psychology. And she was recently, um, awarded, given a special recognition award um, for at the Momentum G Sport for Girls Awards. She's amazing. So if you're a young girl and you're thinking, yeah, but I'm not sure if I can, Dr. Tseve, that's a great example. So if you wanna get in touch, please do get in touch with her. She is available on social media. She, I know she loves to give advice. So that's one person that you can look at as well. Most sports psychologists in terms of education, you need a doctorate in psychology with a sports related um, concentration, but some positions you only just need a master's degree. At the end of the day, it is a doctorate. So if you want to be a doctor, but you don't want to be on the physical side of things and you care more about the mental side, you definitely have a space. So from sports psychology, let's move on to what I do, which is sports journalism. So there are times when you feel like, I love sport, I'm passionate about it, I love to talk about it, but I'm not sure what to do. Technology plays a huge role when it comes to broadcasting these days. In fact, sometimes we find technology makes our jobs a little tricky because things break on social media before we can break them. But that's the beauty of it. I get a lot of people who say, I want to be a broadcaster, I want to be a writer, 
but I don't know how to get into television, how to get into radio. And I always say with technology, with social media, the world is your oyster. You can start a blog. You can start talking about your favorite sports, interview your favorite personalities if you have the ability to uh, or the opportunity to and put that up on Facebook. You can put that up on Twitter. You can, you know, put that up on Instagram and you grow your profile. And before you know it, you now have broadcasters coming to you. You now have newspapers coming to you as opposed to you going to them. So you now have the ability to market yourself so much easier than with us, you know, back in the day when there was no technology and everything had to be done the traditional way. So when you look at technology, use it to your advantage. You have the ability from a journalistic point of view to get into print media, which is writing articles and interviewing sports stars. You have the ability to get into radio, which is to do sports bulletins. You can host the sports show or commentate live matches. If you are a great commentator, I can tell you now, there's a slight shortage of commentators, especially ladies commentators. So if you're a woman and you know you can commentate, put yourself out there. Trust me, there's a huge shortage. I mean, top of my mind right now, there's only two female commentators that I can think of. That's DK and Gloria Brown. That's a problem. <laughs> so if you're a lady and you can commentate, please put yourself out there. Um, from a TV perspective, you can become a roving reporter, uh, a touchline reporter. I've already mentioned at the beginning what a touchline reporter does. You can become an analyst. And these are generally, unfortunately, a space that is closed because it's mainly uh, focusing on, um, what do you call it, former athletes. But nothing stops you from creating your own podcast, from creating your own blog, and you analyze games. You know, we have the likes of the popular Sheikhs Rambedi, um, who analyzes games. Just because he didn't play, just because he's not a former footballer, doesn't mean that he cannot, you know, analyze a match. As I've already mentioned, blogs, podcasts, you can host or cover sports of your choice. So do that, because that opportunity is there. And if the dream and the desire is burning in you, do it. From a broadcast perspective, we also have a whole host of other careers behind the scenes. So you don't just have to be in front of the mic or in front of the camera. We always need camera crew. These are the people who make our lives happen. These are the people who make this masterclass happen. Um, you have outside broadcast. That's what the OB stands for. We also have studios, so you will have somebody like myself, Carol Shabalala, a Lebumutswedi, and Andy Lengube, Thomas Mlambo, who are sitting in studio talking to somebody who's at the stadium. So there's always a duplication of crew that is needed. Crew is the people who work on a production. So you need directors, producers, VT directors, floor managers, sound people. So that is another career that you can get into. Maybe you are into sound, you like music, you like to make people sound good. You have a career in sport. Perhaps you have these great ideas of how to bring about a show on television or on radio. You know how to get information and how to put it in such a way that somebody can create a beautiful show. You can become a producer. Maybe you have an eye for how things look and how to make them look appealing that could be camera work so don't feel like oh no mina i i have no space there is a space for you in broadcasting in sport as a whole ob van drivers i just threw that in there because i know there's people like myself who love to drive so you can get to drive the giant vans that have all the screens inside that go to the stadiums that make the production tick because without those ob vans there is no production. So you are a very important part of the, the production. You become, without you, <laughs> as an OB van driver, there is no production. So generally, to be a broadcast crew member, you need to have gone through film school so that you know how to use a camera, how sound works, um, how production works, because there is a way that a show is put together. So you learn all those things. Just... Put some work into yourself, 
you know, put education first, if you have the opportunity to. Um, go out, get those bursaries. I know the application process tends to be a little tedious, but you'll thank yourself at the end of the day. And we need you. We need young people. You know, we need new, fresh ideas because right now there's just this constant turnaround of the same old, same old. So as a young person, if you've got fresh ideas, you've got hot ideas that you think that's a killer show, come out, put yourself out there, use social media, use technology to your advantage. And I will be seeing you in the future, perhaps even working with you one of these days. Thank you so much for joining me. All the best with your future. Like I say, I cannot wait to work with you in this sporting space. For more informative videos, visit www.empoweryouth.co.za.